Hello everybody. Today we are talking about Tyr in the support role. He is a warrior support and honestly one of my personal favorites and he doesn't really see any uh, real play and even down to casual queue people don't really play and they don't understand. So we're going to get into him today and tell why he's a great character to play in casuals and in ranks to carry your game. So. Looking at our build here, with a warrior support, you're going to want to start with that death toll. It gives you a lot of base damage at the start of the game. This is going to be especially helpful on your auto attacks on tier. Tier has a pretty nice auto attack chain. Combine that with the skills and you're getting a lot of damage off. Uh, you're looking towards your Midas boots, of course, on support unless you get extremely far ahead. That happens in this game, so you're moving into the Warrior Tabai. Don't be afraid of Warrior Tabai. It's a great item on Warrior Sport. If you get ahead, it's going to let you put out a ton of damage until about that 15-minute mark. Looking at next, our core items. Sovereignty, of course, a core on uh, any support, along with Hide of the Urchin for Warrior supports. Mix and match those as you see fit in the game, whether you want one before the other, depending on if they have a lot of magical damage, maybe the Hide, or uh, if you're not feeling like you need the Hide early, go Sov. You can avoid the Hide altogether if you wish, but a great item uh, if you get it relatively early from the stacks. Magi's Blessing, of course, you gotta get it on support eventually, third or fourth item, ju generally, just to help you get those objective secures. If you're gonna go damage on tier, Jotun's Wrath is a great way to go about that. It gives you a bunch of cooldowns so you can get your uh, crowd control off more often. And Void Shield Shifter Shield on Warrior Support slash Assassin Support is always a great item. Uh, Fenrir, good person to get it on tier, great to get it on. Uh, Guan Yu sometimes just a little bit damage and defense at the same time to help you go kind of hybrid Your defense items of course are always situational uh, for healing attack speed etc For your actives Wrath of the Gods most people go blink on tier You don't have to go blink on tier. It's not necessary all the time uh, If they have a ton of healing you need to get the weakening curse Otherwise, it's going to be situational blink or shell depending on how you're feeling that game. If you're not comfortable initiating without uh, blink, go ahead and get it. But once you get really comfortable with here, you might want to look towards shell of absorption the majority of the time. Getting into our abilities here, looking at our passive. He has honestly one of the best passives in the game. Uh, I would take this passive almost any other passive. Basically, he cannot be crowd controlled for more than one second which is super cool as a general passive, and if you really think about it as a support passive in terms of securing objectives, one second is the longest they can CC you for. So that's really great for getting your gold fairies, your fire drives, etc. Fearless, this is the skill you're gonna get first at level one, no matter what, it's your getaway skill, if you will, and your damage skill. Uh, one of the best skills in the game. You're gonna dash forward, you hit people two times, and at the end, you knock them up in the air. Uh, you rank the skill up to max first, it does a ton of damage base, uh, plus your death toll if you end up getting Warrior Tabai, great, great damage. You can hit multiple people with it, really good skill. Power Cleave is the skill you're going to both get at level 2 and you're going to max up second. This is your damage skill in Assault Stance. If you use it at the end of your 1, which is your Fearless, you'll knock them up again so you can get a couple auto attacks in. If you're in your Guard Stance, which is your Defensive Stance, you're going to heal. And you can heal for a lot. You heal for twice for one target and then normal for each other target up to 3. So you get a lot of healing from this skill. Chain Stance, the skill you rank up uh, third. Uh, if you're in Assault Stance, you gain passive physical protection. If you're in your Defense Stance, you get uh, protections, which is really nice in terms of being a tank. You can initiate with the damage and then fall back to your defense uh, once they start focusing you. Lawbringer, you'll get a point in at level 5, and then generally don't get another point in until your other three skills are maxed. Uh, basically, it's a giant leap. You slow when you land. The slow doesn't go up when you land, so you don't gain any utility. It does a little bit more damage, but you're better off getting the chain stance, power clay, fearless ranked up. Uh, those skills all do a lot of really good stuff. So, who do we want to lane with with tier? Well, as tier, you're going to be a really aggressive lane, so you're looking for Anher, you're looking for Neath, you're looking for AMC. High damage characters with CC, uh, Anher, Neath, or just straight damage right right in their face AMC, that kind of ordeal. You don't really want Rama Apollo. Once again, those late game turning on ADCs, you waste the early game potential with the warrior support. In terms of who you want to go against, you want to go against a character like Ath uh, Athena can be okay to go against, kind of hard because she can taunt you out of the Fearless, but if you hit her with the Fearless while you're doing the minions, great uh, to go against her. Bach is another great character to go against. 
some pretty hard lanes on tier. Sylvanas, uh, you generally have a hard time out clearing a Sylvanas. It's kind of iffy. It's actually not as bad as you would think, but not the best matchup. And Geb being a really bad matchup because if you go to Fearless, the support, he can shield the support. He gets out of your Fearless so you don't have your CC chain going on to him. So let's go ahead and get ourselves into this game. On the order side of the map, we will be starting at the speed buff. This both guarantees that uh, the speed can't be stolen in a couple of minutes from the other side if they have better push. Uh, it's also going to allow us to get a really nice experience start in terms of uh, just general experience. The other side has a better start uh, for their support duo lane, but this will allow us to get a lot of XP pretty early, so we're relatively even with them. Also, giving me the speed buff will allow me to have an opportunity to rotate if I wish to, giving me a lot of uh, positional advantage. Not necessarily using my skills here, I can just attack with my Destal and kind of regen my health. A uh, big benefit of Warrior Sport is you can just regen your health with that Destal. I see that they're doing the long start, so I have an opportunity to rotate towards this mid lane if he's going to be out of position. Uh, Tyr has a giant CC chain. The Poseidon does not expect me to be here at all, and so he has no idea. So I'm going to go ahead and knock him toward Jerby here in the mid lane. Knocking him right into my NPCs, and I get a very early first blood, also level 3. Uh, one of those things about getting that speed buff early, I have a very, very fast rotation to that lane so I can put a lot of pressure. Now our mid lane, being a Kronos, uh, having a hard time in the early game is going to be able to get ahead. Payne trying to slow me there, uh, no big deal. I can take him out of that before he becomes CC immune with Fearless and no problem. I have a ton of pots so I can put a lot of pressure. So as tier now, I want to put a lot of pressure on. I still have my speed buff. I'm just looking to put as much uh, hurt onto pain as I can, right? I have no real worries in the world because I can switch stances. I can heal, bada bing, bada boom. Uh, I'm pretty base tanky on tier. So what you're looking to do is just keep the pressure on early. You want to get this early game advantage. Geb is a hard target to go against because he can shield the ADC. So a lot of my pressure will be put onto the Geb because he can't necessarily shield himself all the time to uh, get away from me. Just going ahead and grabbing him again. I'm just going to keep doing this over and over again, right? Looking to kill him. We're getting him really, really low, unfortunately. He just gets away, but what? No big deal, right? He gets really low. He starts to lose XP. He might have to back. He might have to leap from the mid harpies. All good stuff. The reason why I'm putting pressure on the Geb again is because I cannot kill the Anher necessarily because he'll just get Geb shielded. I get stuck in the Thorwall, weird bug right there, no big deal, I'm alright. They have a 4-man rotation over at 2-hour lane and I don't get killed, which means that's a waste of XP for them. Making sure to switch to my guard stance to keep my hit points up. Uh, one great thing about tier is your power cleave, your 2, does a lot of healing. Uh, really, really great skill. Looking for an opportunity to go in if they go in on our Apollo. Just uh, trying to keep myself in position to help them out. As Now that they're pushing up, they've kind of put themselves out of position. And now I'm looking for this Anher. I expect the Anher to jump. He doesn't. That's all right. We can just go ahead and walk right up to him and kill him then. No harm, no foul. I am now two kills up. Uh, plus a first blood. A lot of experience. And this means I can start to play really hyper aggressive. This is where Tyr shines in these areas where the people group up at mid harpies. I get my cleave off on two of them, bada bing, bada boom, easy double kill. Now at this point, since we just killed two of them and another is low, we are going for the gold fury. I make sure to indicate to my team I do not have my hog up. That way our jungler can go ahead and use his hog to secure the objective, just like that. Very simple, very easy gold fury. Uh, with that gold fairy plus the early kills, I have now enough money to go back and get a warrior tab by here at four minutes. Being able to get like a four and a half to five minute Midas boot early is insanely good. And I'm going to be able to get a warrior tab by that early, which is insane. Going ahead and using my power cleave through the Geb. The Geb tried to knock me up right there. I counter and use my one. You cannot be knocked up uh, in your defensive stance one. Just a little fun fact tidbit right there. Grabbing some wards for my ADC, I'm pretty much going to be rotating around looking for kills across the map. Uh, I'm so far ahead with my Warrior Tabai, I'm going to have so much penetration. The base damage on tier 1 is honestly one of the highest in the game. 
uh, combining that with your two at the end, plus you're guaranteed to get an auto attack or two off, you're looking like a thousand damage in that chain. Especially early game, that's like a full health bar. Putting out deep wards for my Apollo, uh, he's not going to get ganked, he doesn't need back wards. Payne thinks he's going to get out, but nah. Boom, bada bing, bada boom, another double kill. You ult the over the wall, you get a kill on the support, you land your power cleave, you get more kills. This is why Tyr is one of my favorite gods. I didn't play him a lot uh, before the SWC, and I've just fallen in love with this character. I am so glad nobody plays him anymore because he's so good. And her trying to secure the objective with his ultimate, it was a good idea, but he couldn't quite get it. I had my hog up, so I used that for the secure. I can grab the blue buff over here, because we can just go right over to our blue buff, and I can have the Apollo uh, get that one. This way, we both have the blue buff. It's really beneficial for Tier because I can use my heal now on my power cleave. I don't have to worry about the mana costs. If you see the attack chain of Tier, you go one half one and a half or so that's about the chain it might be a little bit uh, off on the numbers but that's about the chain you're looking at that last hit on tier you're smacking people extremely hard very important to land that third attack in your chain playing really aggressive on them now because i do have four levels over the support and their mid lane uh just looking to put a lot of pressure on waiting for them to group up and sure enough they do this means i can go ahead and get them both in that skill keeping the pressure on as much as i can they're using a ton of skills on me uh, I've got to be really careful now. I am pretty much dead at this point, but my heal is coming back up in just a second. If I can live like one more second, I can switch over to my other stance and I can go ahead and get out of here. But no, there's an Anher, so I've got to start running towards their base, but I know the Anher is going to be coming towards me, so I need to be extremely careful. But as he comes toward me, I can go ahead and hop away as Jerby picks up the kill on Anher, and I do not have to die this day. My team wants to do the red buff. That's perfectly okay. I am out of there. I have uh, pressed my luck enough for one uh, uh, engagement there. At this point now, I'm kind of deciding what I want to do. Do I want to go tier 2 sob? Do I want to go and hide? Do I want to get uh, tier 3 hog? I realize that the gold theory still isn't spawning for a little bit, so I can go ahead and get tier 2 sovereignty, not have to worry about it. It's going to help me a lot with the physical defense. The Poseidon is not a problem right now. Uh, they're really heavy physical damage. They have a Loki over in the solo lane, and her Thor, Geb's not going to be a problem. Besides, not a problem. So let's go with the Sovereignty, which is going to give me upwards of 80 physical defense, plus a great amount of health, plus it's good for your teammates. Overall, great item. Did not need to hide. Not really having a mana problem, because I'm getting blue buffs. All kinds of good stuff. Enemy missing At this point, I can essentially 1v1 anybody on the map. Uh, I can maybe even 2v1 anybody right now, even as the support, because I'm going this uh, very aggressive build. A uh, little tidbit right there. You don't necessarily want to clear the whole way with your power cleave. What you can do is you just kind of clear a little bit of it. At the end of it, once you're looking at two or three minions left, go ahead and use your heal. You can heal yourself back to full. This Anher has no choice but to go ahead and jump away from me, which means I can just go ahead and uh, follow him up on that. He cannot get away from me no matter what. If he didn't jump... I use my my fearless combo on him. If he jumps, I ulti and use my fearless combo on him. He pretty much just had to sit there and take it. Didn't really get a choice. Waiting for my combo to come back again onto the Thor. It does not come back up in time though, so whatever, no big deal. He can go ahead and get a full collapse onto this Poseidon. He will die relatively quickly. Trying to secure a kill on him right there. Trying to get a little a little kill secure. Not not a kill steal, but a kill secure. Unfortunately, I do not get it. But I mean, I guess Nemesis is like okay or something. But, I mean, as far as hyper game end game carries, I was thinking I was gonna be this one in this situation, but whatever. Up about six k gold right now. This is kind of the situation, like I said, that you're looking for on tier. This Thor thinks he's super cool, and I'm gonna like, what are you doing? I can grab him and the Geb in the same Fearless. If I wouldn't have grabbed him and the Geb, the guy would have just shielded the Thor, and the Thor would have gotten out. That's why I made sure I aimed it towards the Geb as well. The Gold Fury has respawned, which means I need to go ahead and grab my Tier 3 Hog as well as a Sentry Ward to see if we can maybe go ahead and do that. Uh, <clears throat> It just respawned very recently, and that was the reason why I didn't get it on the pass back, was I didn't actually need it at that time. My team resets the Gold Fury because there is a Geb rolling in. Uh, 
they still really low. Their whole team is extremely low on uh, levels right now. Their experience is really hurting them. So I can just look for pressure anywhere I want to, really. Even Tier 1 towers won't be a threat to me at this point. So I hear Thor in the air. I know he's going to go for my team in the left lane. I indicate that to them because I can hear it on the... Uh, here in my audio. At this point, I'm looking to kill Gab. He has a really smart ult, which makes him CC immune. Uh, really smart idea there from him. Uh, it does save him from the death, but it won't save his friend Poseidon. I may have took a lot of damage, but I can use my heal. That's like a 400, 500 hit point heal that I can do right there. Uh, really big money heals. The Poseidon is dead. The get was relatively low. I know his ult is down. If he does happen to come in, I can use my fearless combo on him and probably kill him. So I don't have to be too worried right now. So this should be a relatively free gold theory. Uh, and sure enough, it is. There's nothing I can do about it. They were too low. They had no mana. They had to back. At this point, we've gotten two gold theories by the 10 minute mark, which has got to be decently demoralizing to the other team. There's also a 9 and 0 uh, support on the other team, which has got to hurt just a little bit. Still making sure to do very basic things like getting blue buffs. Uh, even if you're this far ahead, you can't just be completely roaming around doing complete nonsense. You gotta stick to the basics. You gotta make sure you're getting XP from lanes. You gotta make sure that you're helping your uh, ADC out as much as you can. He goes ahead and ults. That's why I wait to use my skill. Unfortunately, I do not have quite enough mana to get my uh, cleave off after the combo. Apollo happens to also be out of mana, so we're not going to quite be able to secure a kill there. But the Anher had to use his ultimate, and he got a lot of pressure put onto him, so he's pretty scared. Apollo making a smart move right there. He sees the Thor ulting in on him because of the ward. We have the gold theory, so he makes the preemptive decision to just ultimate out to be safe. Very smart decision. I need just a couple more gold for a sovereignty here, so I'm just going to go ahead and wait for it. There's nothing wrong with waiting in base for like 10 to 20 seconds if you need some extra gold. Uh, once you start getting to 30 seconds to a minute, you don't want to be waiting that long. You'd rather go out, maybe do the back harpy, and then back again until you're at least doing something. But if it's about that 20 second or below mark, you can go ahead and wait, and it's not going to cause you any problems. You're not going to fall behind or anything. No real objectives on the map. The gold fury is down. The tier 1 tower middle is down. So at this point, I'm roaming around. I've already got plenty of XP, so I don't need to be super conscious about it. But I want to be able to keep my lead as well. So I'm just looking around. Maybe Poseidon's middle. I don't know. Nope, he's not. No big deal. I can start roaming around to the right lane. Now that the gold fury is gone, I no longer need to be over in that left middle hand side of the map. Because they can't sneak in a gold fury while I'm on the other side of the map if there's no gold fury. Looking to steal buffs if I can. There is no buffs up, so what are you going to do? They have a Loki over in the right lane. Pretty hard to gank, but who knows? We have a lot of people here. Maybe we can go ahead and kill the Loki if we put pressure on all his uh, escape routes. Waiting for the NPCs to go by so Loki does not see me. We're going to go ahead and come in behind him. Loki ultimate's out, but he can't get out of this. He does get his ultimate off, but Jeremy hits him with a really good uh, chrono stun, which applies to him after he ultimates, so I can walk in and get a free kill. Looking for minions to heal off of. Uh, one cool thing about tiers, you don't necessarily have to back if you're low on hit points. You just have to find some minions to use your skills on. So right here, I go ahead and get three to group up. Boom, 500 hit point heal. I'm almost full again. If I do that one more time, I'm going to be perfectly at full health and I can look to re-engage again onto somebody. Mid Harpy spawning soon. We have complete control on these mid Harpies. It also allows me a chance to get my heal off. Now I'm at full hit points and I can pretty much do whatever I want again. My three is getting up towards max rank, which means that right now I'm getting 40 physical power from it, or I believe 32 uh, defense is, which is crazy. Poseidon thinks he's safe, but he ain't safe when there's a tier here, except for he actually is because he has a really smart beads. Uh, but not quite. Jerby's going to go ahead and finish him off. Quality move from him, though. Really smart decision doing those beads. 
Thor trying to get away, but Jeremy Lanes are really good. Uh, one on him, going ahead and finish him off. At this point, it's 18 to two, two gold furies down. Uh, we're up in their jungle taking buffs when they're up, and they're getting decently demoralized. This game probably won't last that much longer. The Anher is in his tower. He doesn't even see me behind him, which means I have a very free uh, walk up, fearless, kill him. If he would have maybe had more map awareness, he would have seen me there. Would it have saved him? Would it have mattered? I don't know, but at least he wouldn't have died that exact second. Doing a ton of tower damage because of uh, how much physical power I gained from that assault stance. Not to mention I've got the early uh, itemization coming out. Going ahead looking for the buffs. One thing you want to do when you're ahead on any character is you want to go through their jungle. You'll see that's a big thing that the professional teams do is when they get ahead, you always go to their jungle. You take their buffs. That's going to make your character stronger. It takes XP away from the other team. It takes gold away from the other team. And then you can go ahead and do your buffs and you're getting both, which is a really, really big thing. Uh, that separates a lot of the really good teams from the OK teams is being able to take advantage of when you are ahead and moving into the enemy's jungle and not being afraid, making sure you have good communication with your team that your team is following you are backing you up so if they come to fight you can go ahead and fight in their jungle because you're already ahead so you should win the fight at this point just roaming around apollo's trying to do the gold fury you know nothing really crazy is happening but they're gonna go ahead and surrender this game they have had enough i was gonna start working into my jones wrath but that is the end of this one's guy so we're gonna go ahead and start to get ourselves into this windscreen with some bopping we had a great game there as tier pretty much carrying our team to victory single-handedly abusing the very early game damage that tier has based on his numbers getting an extreme level advantage putting a lot of pressure on all all the lanes doing early ganks with your super long CC chain. We did 11k damage the most in the game. We took 10.5 the most in the game. We're mitigating a ton of damage because we have a defensive stance. That's what you're really looking to do on tier. As far as our final build goes, Death Toll in the Warrior Tabai because we got so far ahead. Then we went into our Sovereignty. I didn't necessarily need the Hide of the Urchin in this game. I wasn't feeling like I was getting very mana hungry, nor did I feel like their Poseidon was doing enough damage to ward getting the magical uh, defense. So Sovereignty was better off for me for more physical defense. Then working my way into a Jotun's Wrath because of the severity of the length that I was ahead was going to allow me to carry even harder transitioning into that mid to late game. Thanks guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this week I'm also probably going to end up doing Fenrir and a couple other uh, supports. We're getting down to the strange supports, so hang out and we'll uh, get to it. If I need to redo anything for Season 2, I will start to redo those as I start to learn the meta as Season 2 comes out. Thank you for having uh, me in your day, and if you appreciate the videos, please subscribe.